And I'm going to shift gears on you, man. Uh, earthquake, man. Right. You know, uh, uh, Black Ron, he came in here and uh, he was uh, talking about Earthquake was, you know, h hooked him up and helped him out. A couple of dudes have been on here. Yeah. Like, His what is daughter he? is my manager. Wow. I didn't know that. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. 101. Yeah, we going to talk. But let me ask you this, man. I seen you on uh, Kurt Bone TV. Shout out. Um, that's a, a guy from D.C., right? I, yes, I just, You turned me on to him. Yeah, yeah. Looking through your stuff? Yeah, you turn, yeah. And it Kurt seemed Bone like you had a, a lot of respect legend, for him. Legend man. in the city, man. And I, I like that. I was like, man, because we everywhere. You yeah. know what I mean? And it, for him to, y'all to lock in like that, somebody to see that, and they'll understand it. Man, I might can do something. Or, damn, I never thought, because if he been through what I've been through, somebody see him sitting there, they're going to be like, yeah, man, if he made it, Oh, I yeah, but chance. that's what it was for yeah. me. Like, <laughs> to, for him, to, when I met him, and the fact that he knew me was like nigga you know me cause that was you know at a time in my life that's what I aspired to be, be yeah. you know I aspired to be a Kurt Bone or, yeah. you know one of them type of dudes the streets like that was what we yeah. was into like I was into it like it wasn't no you know what I mean I ain't never been no thug or no, but I was a hustler's hustler that's it That's like, and I'm you know I don't I never had a problem with a problem I'm the epitome of a DC nigga to the core but to see him embrace me in a way that he talked to me when I met him, let me know that, man, this is a real nigga. Like, I like that. Like, beyond what he did and what he known for, he didn't approach me on none of that. He, he came humble to me when he didn't have to. You know what I'm saying? Like, he didn't have to approach me in a capacity under what he did. He could have been a, it could have been a situation where a lot of people don't understand, like, you got to give grace to gangsters in a lot of sense, especially when you successful because they really can you know make it hard for you i come from out of the extortion game like it's oh yeah it, it go it can go down yeah. and they can motherfucker can choose to give you problems instead of grace so i always respect that whenever i come in contact with anybody that comes from out of that lifestyle when they meet me because i understand because i come from it too you know what i'm saying so i appreciate another dude jojo capone out of chicago That's hard. like I appreciate when, when people come with love because I understand that that ain't what is being given out here, especially in the environments that we come from. Love is pretty much the last thing that you get mm. when you when you come from out of these places. So somebody like Kurt Bone embracing me, it's like, man, whatever I can do to give you that love back, I'm willing to do because I know that for you to look at me as somebody that's representing a, a culture that you helped set the foundation mm -hmm, for, mm -hmm. man, that's an honor. Man, I'm gonna shift gears on you, man. Uh, earthquake, man. Right. You know, uh, uh, Black Ron, he came in here and uh, he was uh, talking about Earthquake was, you know, h hooked him up and helped him out. A couple of dudes have been on here. Yeah, like, his what is daughter he? is my manager. Wow, I didn't know that. Yeah, his but, daughter is my manager, somebody who I would say I don't even know how to put boss lady in the words, but like the most important person to me being able to be who I am totally is Natalia Stroman. That's all. All the way. Mm. So you, how did you meet Earthquake and how did that whole? Uh, I met Quake, which was crazy. I was emceeing at the Comedy Zone, which was my weekend job. It was a, a, a comedian there named Tom Simmons. Okay. And uh, Tom Simmons was just really impressed with me and my hosting skills. So in between shows, we do two shows every night. I go out in between the first and the second show, and he was like, man, you're really good. You're just starting, man. Like, man, who are some of your influences? I'm like, man, Earthquake, my favorite comedian. He was like, oh, that's cool, man. That's cool, man. That's cool. So we had our conversation. I go back up, start the second show, bring the feature up. When I walk back outside, he hands me the phone and says, walk and talk. I'm like, hello? He's like, hey, what's up, nigga? I'm like, who is this? He's like, Quake. I said, Quake who? He was like, Earthquake, nigga. I'm like, oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So it just happened like that. And when we had the conversation, he was like, you know, I told him I was from DC, you know what I'm saying? I was a young comedian. He said, well, Tom is somebody I gave a start to. And if he talking about you like that, man, when I come in town, I'ma holler at you. You know what I mean? I'ma, uh, you know, get your information. I'ma holler at you. You know, I was just excited to have a conversation. I am like, this nigga ain't finna holler at me. But when he came in town, and this was like six months later, he hit me up and was like, man, come to the show. They had a show at the Greensboro Coliseum. And he invited me to the show. I came and watched the show. He brought me backstage. Again, I'm just a nigga in the room. So I'm in the room. 
everybody's con- D Ray. I tease D Ray about yeah. this all the time. D Ray D-Ray. is my like I love that nigga. That's my big homie. I mean, from D Ray to some more to Bruce Bruce and all Bruce of these Bruce. different legendary people came in the room, and I was just a nigga on the wall. And I don't know if he felt like I cared because I didn't, but just when everybody left, Quake was like, "Hey man, just to let you know." Don't be, you know, don't feel no type of way because ain't nobody talked to you or had no conversation with you, none of that shit. Because if you, what you say you is and what Tom told me you is, you will see all these motherfuckers again. Yeah. And that's exactly what happened. That's like hard. everybody that walked into that room is a peer now. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So Quake just, you know, is somebody that, uh, you know, gave me that inspiration in the game. And I always give him credit for reaching out and touching somebody that he didn't have to reach out and touch at all you know man thank you thank you so much man Uh, because he here this weekend too I didn't even know. Yeah, oh, here this weekend. Oh, man. Here go this see weekend. Quake, man. Go see Quake, He's, man. That's the that's I the, just that's looked because I was just looking and I see he already sold out. Damn. Oh yeah. Well, you and know, you know Sunday is my birthday. Oh, happy birthday, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, we, we might have to pop. try to work that out, man. <laughs> and get you in there. You know what I'm uh, saying? But yeah, but you know, like I said, just the irony of it. I ended up doing a show at Southern University. Okay. And um, you know, just I we talk about it all the time. You know what I'm saying? And uh, just. You know how you feel energy, you know what I mean? It's lovely, just black girl just walked around the court. I'm like, she just had the biggest smile on her face. I'm like, who is you? She's like, hey, you know what I mean? I'm Natalia, nice to meet you, you know what I'm saying? And just you, I just felt like, uh, you know, Good you people. was solid, man. Yeah. you could feel it immediately. Mm-hmm. And so uh, this is my first time in New Orleans. I had never been in New never Orleans. Been in there, and, no. and New Orleans is one of them cities like Houston I was, like, like heavily influential on me if, in regards to the music. And uh, we was having a conversation. We go there, but go ahead. We, we having a conversation after the show, and she was like, "You know, this your first time in New Orleans?" I was like, "Yeah." She was like, "You ain't never been to Bourbon Street?" I was like, "Nah." She was like, "We going?" So we drove from Baton Rouge to Bourbon Street, and we out there kicking it. You know what I mean? Having a good time. And she asked me, you know what I mean? Like, she was like, "Who your favorite comics?" I was like, "Man, Earthquake, my favorite comedian." She was like, "Yeah, that's Dad." I was like, yeah, I feel like that nigga my father, too. <laughs> she was <laughs> like, she like, no, that that's my really father. Is. I'm yeah, like, right. get the fuck out of here. Wow. I had no idea. I had no idea. That's, like, I had, that's just how, that's why I always say to her all the time, that like, it's divine. That, that's why yeah. I know, can't nobody tell me nothing about what I'm doing. I know God put God me put here it. to do exactly. what it is get that I'm doing it. because of the way it come to me. I don't I ask for any of it. It just come to me like that. And when I tell you, like, ever since I met her, like, we started officially working together. Like when I was on Wild and Out, I was doing all this shit by myself. Nobody really wanted to, you know, you know, the game is different. Everybody yeah. wanna, you know, they, they rock with who they rock with. And even though you might be better or more talented, they like, nugget, I'm not putting my hands mm-hmm. on you because that's gonna fuck up who I'm trying yeah. to push. Yeah. And I hadn't, you know, had anybody to talk to that understood the game, but she grew up in the game. She earthquake daughter, so exactly. she knew the game. So, she knows. so I reached out to her like, hey man, you know, I ain't never had nobody look over this shit that understands what it is. Would you be willing to do that? So she wasn't doing that at that time? No, and that was the first person that that's gave cool. her that, that ability to wow, do that. Wow, that's dope. So that's how we got to get, and like, you know, I'm telling you, man. She has she's, more clients now, too? Oh, yeah. Black okay. Ron is one of her clients. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, she's yeah, a yeah. savant, man. I mean, literally one of the, you know, most brilliant people I have ever came in contact with in my life and mm-hmm. I you know I just have an affinity for black women mm-hmm. and I just you know anybody you know I'm not a judgmental person but if I look around you and you ain't got no black women around you I'm looking at you kind of crazy cuz cuz it's a that. certain it's a certain level of of understanding that a black woman going to give you that you ain't going to get from no somebody other woman as a black that man too somebody else Somebody else said um, they could not have a male. Who's, who was that saying they couldn't have a male as a um, as that come, person? Yeah, I mean, it ain't because even just... Because females, is just something up. that a female yeah, can do. She's going and to... And she can tell you, get up, you have this to go, yeah. blah, 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 and you will listen to that, but when you deal with a man, it's just the ego thing. Yeah, just, nah, I just... It, it, it don't just even don't have match. to be... But you just got to have some black women around you because if you don't have no black women around you that can tell you what to do and you listen to me that mean you operating off strictly nigga shit mm-hmm. and that's that's gonna come crashing down no matter which way you look at it you gotta have that feminine energy and as a black man a black woman has to be present somewhere in this game especially to be able to tap you on your shoulder and pull you to the side and say hey nigga even if it's just straighten up 
mm-hmm. fuck you got going on mm-hmm. or oh, this the move you need to make and having that level of trust man you know i'm i thank god for it every day yeah we on boss talk one-on-one yeah we gonna talk